Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests to give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. That can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. You can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. Now buckle up and get ready for today's content with our special guest, Sam Hain. Yeah, you'll hear all kinds of things, all kinds of stories that you will just be blown away with by my friend Sam. So buckle up again, get ready, and here we go for another episode of Hope Revealed. So my name is Sam Hain. Hain, if you can't say Hain, say Chen. You can butcher my name, no problem. I am a mindset accelerator coach. I help people with their attitude awareness towards taking actionable strategic steps towards growth and specifically in health and wellness, but really coaching as a mindset accelerator coach, any area of life that they want to break through and transform and really grow into a better version of themselves. And uh, that's it. Let's rock and roll. I'm here hanging out with my buddy Sam tonight, and we are in the uh, the Beer Patrol at LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, his beer's pretty good, but he's probably had his much longer. I've had mine. I think that he's this got- This is the beard, beard Brand Patrol system. This is it. I just have a little more skunk going on in mine right here, so- I probably have a couple yeah, more years. We need, I need like nine and a half different conditioners on a daily basis. Don't tell anybody that. I know that beards are expensive, bro. It's ridiculous, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a contract soon from Pantene Pro V, but that's that's don't tell anybody. I had a friend of mine that told me I should get an Instagram just for my beard, and actually, it's not a yeah. bad idea. It's not a bad. It's idea. not, but but you need to get the following before you'll have like ten brands reach out to you and be like, push our product. <laughs> for sure but then i'd be free product so i'd be down with that so anyway sam yeah. is, a, is an awesome guy and uh, we've met through linkedin and he has uh some some really awesome times of uh well not awesome times every time he says something is pretty awesome so uh he he talks a lot on his feet uh he walks around during the day we were talking about some of his backdrops and some of the scenery that he has pretty expensive stuff it's called like nature like god made stuff going on there right and you have some really great thought processes, and and uh, sometimes it's like you're walking around. I can just imagine you're work, working. You're like, I'm going to go talk about this right now, and you go outside and do it. And like, bam! You throw it out there, and then back to work. Yeah, again. yeah. The spontaneous, sporadic sparkle of the scientific soul. Yeah. Yes. There. You see, I can only imagine how that would work in your life. So, I mean, tell me a little bit about about you and what what gets you tick what gets you going what's uh what makes you think the way you think and how excited you are to do things like this in life and get people to start thinking about stuff and say hey what about the zodiac let's talk about the zodiac this week right so it's all about curiosity i share my journey of curiosity with people like i'm not asking people particularly for their industry or my industry i'm just sharing my curiosity with people and i'm curious not just about how things are done but how things work and how people work, how people think, how they do stuff, how I work. So I'm always curious about creativity, not just curious about curiousness. I'm not just curious about people, but I'm actually curious about cu- curious things that people are actually could be more curious about. So my journey for growth uh, really comes from my curiosity. And I'm always curious. You know, I know how people people would be so curious about trying to or looking for new adventure, new physical, demographic, environmental adventures. But I'm always looking to be curious about like higher levels of thought, different levels of thinking, different ph- philosophical uh, disciplines, and religion, and different knowledge, different wisdom out there. Have you always been that way? Like as a kid, were you like that? Or yeah, so I love playing sports, and um, so I'm very competitive also. But um, I realized that when I'm curious about life, there's so there's so much more work, but there's so much more physical effort when it comes to actually using the curiosity in in its for its immediate capacity, which is just having myself and allowing myself to be curious in the moment with whatever I want to be curious about. 
But when you're in sports, you need like a team of players and you need, so there's a lot more physical conditions that go into it. So it's a lot more difficult, not difficult because it's hard, but difficult just because uh, it takes a lot more resources to put together. But curiosity, when it comes to my awareness and just my intellectual academic uh, journey, so to speak, um, um, I, th there's, it's so much easier or so much more effortless to be resourceful. Um, obviously, it takes yeah. a lot of a lot of emotional and cognitive uh, effort and toil, and uh, it can be excruciating or uh, you know grueling at times, but in a good way. Um, so is that like when I, you're doing yeah. crossword puzzles and you can't get the last three lines? Is that like ah? Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. So we're literally going into the soul of uh, the soul of, of of languages in that moment. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was always curious, but I didn't necessarily always put my curiosity in a good place. Um, that really helped me in the long run and help really helped me help the people around me or just share my awareness with people. Like if we're curious about the wrong things, we can literally not only hurt ourselves, but people. Like if I'm <laughs> curious about like things you said or did that doesn't benefit you or doesn't benefit me or doesn't benefit our environment or your environment, then I'm literally like, it's, it's just like exhausting curiosity for the wrong purposes. You know, it's instead of like asking it's like, it's like we're, I'm in a dark room and instead of asking why it's dark, uh, instead of asking actually how do I get light, it's like I'm asking why is it dark? <laughs> you know, so it's like, it, so it would be the wrong type of curiosity. Like it, it's basically like asking, being in a problem or be, seeing, a, you know, seeing a situation where it's a challenge, you're like, oh, why am I being challenged? Why is the wrong question to ask? You should be like, what is this trying to teach me? What so resources are, do I need to collect to actually get out of this? And uh, how is this making me grow? Why is asking where it came from and how and what is really asking, you know, where could this lead me to? So it's really, maybe it's the difference between being nost nost nostalgically negative to, um, to positively optimistic and forward thinking outside, outside the box thinking type of, um, type of progressive um, um, growth oriented um, of, of curiosity. So um, that's, that's how I see it right now, um, in this moment when you're asking me this question, but curiosity could, curiosity, there's different channels of how you would, you know, engage your curiosity in a good way or how you would engage it in a, in a way that's not going to help you. So you actually have to ask yourself if curiosity is in context, if it's constructive and, um, is it bringing you more optimism and, and more growth? Um, curiosity used the wrong way, um, could literally uh, just hamper you and not bring you to any type of holistic hope altogether. Yeah, that's interesting. So how do you how do you apply that into your everyday life? I mean, when you're there working at your job and stuff like that, how does that? Do you like just shelf curiosity, or is it? Or are you always curious about some things? Do you like drive people crazy at work and they're like, Sam, enough other questions already? Right, or or is it? You know, what is it? How's that flow? So the flow is that you know, um, the, there's a skill that that obviously everybody sh everybody should always work on the skill of resilience or it's the skill of um, transition transition resilience um, segue to segue from different states uh, so I could be in a state of, of humor and the people around me I'll be like yo what's going on what are you up to whatever things like that um, how are you how's everything and then I could just be like sporadically humorous but then I could I could just like literally busy myself uh, in solitude and be curious about something that I think is going to make me look for answers or make me ask other people questions like would it seriously get them, you know, get their cognitive spark flowing. Um, so I actually have to ask myself, like when I'm curious, I have to ask myself, am I being constructively curious? Is this going to lead me to anything? Or am I being curious about something that's literally going to hit me into a wall? Like so, you literally have that like kind of thing going on all the time. Yeah. That's amazing. Not to you, but it's amazing to me. <laughs> it's just like, yeah how to have that constant conversation. So when it comes yeah. down to curiosity, it's like, uh, what are some of the things that, well, I mean, you're very spontaneous. So, I mean, you're, you're constantly thinking about everything, but I mean, what would be, are there some main things that like really, like some people with Rubik's cubes, they can't get a Rubik's cube. They just break the thing and put it all back together again. Oh, I did a Rubik's cube, right? But some people just, they have a, they have a, a lifelong pursuit of certain things. Are there certain things that you just really constantly go after or, or maybe just kind of whatever you just kind of just go after thought? The positive guidelines of curiosity is, is that you have to ask yourself the CTA question. Is your curiosity going to bring you to a CTA, to a call to action? Is your curiosity is just going to get you to, to journey into higher levels of consciousness or 
just a higher cognitive, um, you know, complex, sophisticated situations of, of how things work. I mean, that's fine. But um, at the end of the day, if it's not going to change your actionable reality towards growth when it comes to impacting yourself and the world, then uh, you got to ask yourself, is that curiosity really worth going into or, or really, you know, inviting and just entertaining a lot of time to, uh, it would be the difference between reading a book that's just going to fill you with information um, or it's going to be a book that of information that's really going to allow you to reverse that into intel intelligence that's going to bring you a bottom line um, growth call to action type of uh, type of uh, reality. So I so every time I'm curious, I literally have to ask myself, OK, so this is going into higher levels, but it's you know, we're not meant to dream for the dream to become a bigger dream and to keep dreaming. We're meant to dream to bring that dream down to this reality, right? So I have to constantly ask myself, like, uh, okay, so I'm in a dream state right now. My curiosity is, yeah, I'm in a dream state. How do I snap back into reality? How is this going to help me practical right now? And, you know, it's funny because um, outside the box thinkers, when they're speaking to people, that, and, and, um, and we could just, like, we can go into a conversation that really gets hypothetical or, you know, very imaginative at, at its core, at its nucleus. Um, then we're just like literally like floating away and then, um, <laughs> right. And then we're like, oh, wow, we're flying. We're in the stars. We're in the clouds. No problem. That's all good. But like, then you, the, you have to like bottom line, you have to bottom line the call and the conversation. And you're like, okay, where do we just go? Like, how does this help us bottom line? Or let's come back to this immediate reality. How is this going to help you grow in this situation? Uh, how's it going to help you improve? How's it going to help you progress? How's it going to help you enhance? Um, the, the, the factors, um, uh, the fa factors in, in uh, of this conversation, the factors of this reality. So the curiosity literally needs to have a starting point, a midpoint and an end point. I guess it would be the, the, the hypothetical aspect of it, the more strategic aspect of it, and then the more actionable aspect of it. And we literally need to go through from the general to the specific to the most actionable. So we would have to ask ourselves, like, how is this curiosity, uh, a, a cognitive conversation? How does that cognitive conversation lead influence the emotions, and then how does the, 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 that cognitive um, emotional influence influence the bottom line action? So there has to be a map. It has to be a starting point, midpoint, and endpoint. And um, actually, obviously, yeah, the start point would be the, the the conversation of it, the cognitive conversation, the logistical side, and then the emotional side, and then the practical actionable side. And then you put the, all those three together, you have an entire puzzle. Obviously, you never want to get lost in one piece of the puzzle uh, because you always want to see the bigger picture of the puzzle and you always want to zoom in, but always zoom out and not, never, never get lost. Obviously, don't get lost. It's always, again, about the transition. Don't get lost in the big picture. Don't get lost in the small picture. Always have that zoom in, zoom out, panoramic perspective, eagle's eye view, but also a, uh, a very uh, minuscule, microscopic view into the minutia and uh, of the moment of the reality of the, of the action you want to take and w however you want to grow. So I always have to ask myself these questions when I'm curious. Is this curious curiosity con constructive? Is it in context? Um, is, it, is it strategic? Um, is it detailed? Is it realistic? Is it timely? And uh, these questions are the questions I have to ask myself about the general question of the curiosity in whatever specific area of curiosity I'm actually channeling and aiming my curiosity into towards. So uh, that's just a, that's a small roadmap into curiosity. I'm just thinking for a second, you know, I used to be a drug addict and alcoholic myself a long time ago. And back in those days, if you and I were to hang out, you would just totally just blow my mind, bro. <laughs> I'd be like, wow. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's some like, like interesting friends that I have and I, I love being around them because I would totally venture into just hypothetical curiosity states all day long, but I'd never come back down. I would never land on this physical reality. So the danger of that is, is that like, if I'm around like-minded, serious people, I would never want to go to work. And there's some people like, I seriously, I'm like, dude, it's good or bro or friend, you know, it's good. I don't leave, live next to you because then I would never want to work. We would just be like totally talking all day long and it was yeah. vacation, no work at all. So it's like, now I realize why I'm in such a practical day-to-day -day job because I could totally get lost in thought and imagination and in daydreaming. I'm very disciplined about being daydreaming and daydreaming. The question is, how do I transition my daydream states into just being practical, strategic, actionable, and just getting things done? No, I think that's powerful what you mentioned earlier about 
you know, even when you bring it up to daydreaming for people that are, are really, you know, creative or people that really like to run with their thoughts is that, uh, you know, we, I used to have an old saying, so you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good, right? So you have all these things going on, but it, it never lands, right? I mean, what good does it do if you're flying in the clouds all day long, right? This is what you're saying. So to have that discipline to be able to bring things to the ground is pretty powerful. So I'm wondering when you talk to folks that you're, you're working through in coaching or mindset stuff, and they come to you with, with things that they're trying to process or get through, um, you know, how does, that, how does that flow work? I mean, they get people that would just spill their guts to you and you kind of sit there and listen and share things with them, or is that a, a really a lot of back and forth going on there? Do you pull some of that curiosity stuff into their lives or they think, are they along the same mindsets or different people? How's that kind of work out in your life when, when you have people coming into yours? So uh, it's an ocean of everything you just mentioned. Swim, baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, swim, swim, take deep dives. So the situation is as follows. Um, I like to look at it this way. Uh, we have, there's a pool, you have a back door, you have, you know, in the back of your house, you have a pool and then there's the ocean. Some people are very, pool oriented in thought. And I literally have to go through the journey with them and take their hand and, and, and just say, you have a pool in front of you. I know it's in the back of your house, but there's also an ocean. Two thirds of the world is water. Let's go to the ocean of thinking. Let's get into your imagination. Let's go from your specific detail oriented zoom in focus. Let's zoom out a little. Let's go into the ocean of possibilities. And then there are other people that are very ocean oriented then we would have to go into pool thinking and be like, okay, you're very broad, but we need to go through the crucial, I don't know, it could even be burdensome or, or you know, painstaking, you know, cognitive and emotional journey of going into details and, and get them to focus on actionable steps or specific details that they would actually need to work on uh, to see quantum growth or unprecedented growth in that specific area that they want growth in. So, Pool thinking, ocean thinking, if you want to look at it that way, otherwise macro, micro, or mm -hmm. global to local thinking, those are really the, the it's all about transitions, it's all about, look, it's, it's all about uh, perception, awareness shifts, perspective shifts, paradigm shifts, term it however you want, but we really need to look at where the person's at, where they want to get to, um, how they could look at things differently. That way they see a much bigger picture of the situation. No, absolutely. So you told me you've got um, four, four boys. How old are all the boys? Um, almost 11, 9, 8, and two weeks old. So the, two weeks. Woohoo! Yeah. Congratulations. Gemini. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we talked about that, didn't we? I'm a Gemini. Yeah. So, um, so tell me about the kids. Like, are they into sports? Uh, your 11 year old, is he just bouncing off the walls and playing Fortnite all the time or something? Uh, no, no Fortnite. Um, I try to get them away from that, even though they know what that is from school only because I know it's not going to give them creativity, hands on creativity, or it's the wrong type of creativity. They're going to be creative about, you know, attacking people and stuff like that. You know, it's important to be creative about being creative. Yeah. And I think that, Go ahead. Preach. Up, I'm, gonna, we, I'm gonna let my son watch this part of the of the podcast right here because he is a Fortnite junkie at 11 years old, unfortunately, and I'm trying to wean him from Fortnite. Right. So um, I have this policy that that losing a lot of weight and health and wellness really helped me. And the policy is, or the perspective, it's a perception. Um, you, we can't go cold turkey. We have to limit, and then we can eventually eliminate. Mm -hmm, that's great. Limit so, and eliminate. Mm -hmm. So if he's doing three hours of Fortnite, be like, okay, do your homework first, eat dinner, shower, then do an hour of Fortnite, and then just limit his time less, 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 less. Obviously, you have to fill the, the, the new time or the time that he's not doing Fortnite with other fun stuff. Like um, you, you could be like, you'd be like, okay, let's go on a trip. Let's go bowling. Let's go sports. You have to fill that time with something that's just as engaging or even more cerebrally, emotionally, and physically engaging as Fortnite, so really fires on all his neurons is all of his emotional emotional and neurological um, um biochemistry so to speak and yeah. then um and then I, i'm there's nothing more exciting than attention you could give somebody so when you give when you tell somebody i'll give you attention or you actually give them attention you could literally that beats any type of uh, technological distraction or or engagement really so so being creative about being creative 
or being creative about um, giving the people you're around or you're with attention and really engaging with them in a really holistic way, like cognitively, emotionally, physically, that really helps to replace any type of, of um, any type of addiction, really. And I'm sure you know this yourself, that people that are, either drink a lot or, or they have, or they smoke a lot, or they have any type of addiction for anything, really. Uh, addiction is just an escape and they, they tell themselves that that's the solution to life or to, to just running away towards. And, but they're very sensitive. They're the most sensitive people in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing is engaging. Nothing is numbing themselves from the, that sensitivity as much as the addiction, the paradigm of the, the addiction that they created. So what, what we need to do is really just engage them in a really deep way. And then we literally get them, uh, into a really powerful dynamic of, of a healthy addiction, which is towards, towards a really deep focus of, 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 it, of being engaged with them. Attention, attention speaking, uh, attention wise, we could literally uh, wean them off, so to speak, a limit and then eventually eliminate. So we have to go through that limit towards eliminate because 180 degree turn, it's hard for that to come. It's very hard. It takes a lot of discipline, this determination. And all those det- the discipline, the determination are, you know, internal muscles that need to be, uh, need to be grown into. And that takes time. So limit to eliminate is the best way I literally got off from going from eating a bowl of cheesecake because I love cheesecake to eventually just going down to half a bowl to a spoon and then eventually to eliminating altogether throughout my weight loss journey. And that came t- also with all the other foods that were literally sabotaging my health, fat loss, weight loss. Uh, journey into becoming a more healthy, holistic, indi- uh, oriented individual. Yeah, n- no doubt. So uh, uh, real quick about that. I know it's a big part of your life. So you uh, you got to be, how big did you end up getting at one point of your life where you felt like this is enough? So it wasn't the weight so much as, as, as it was about the the existential or yeah, the, just the general frustration about not having energy and yeah. knowing that I need, that I could have so much more to be able to be so much more. And that means that I knew that my energy is where it shouldn't be. And I knew that the choices that I was, I was making daily literally accumulated into the overall void and vacuous uh, feeling that I was having. It wasn't an emotional feeling. It was just an overall feeling um, that I was lacking the feeling that I needed, that oomph, that energy, that um, that velocity, the existential velocity, uh, the, the, the existential inertia um, to really tackle anything and really go head on, to really accelerate every area of my life. So I was missing that anchor, that fundamental passion. I knew, I know that I'm a very enthusiastic person, but I wasn't feeling the enthusiasm. It's almost like I knew I had something in my pocket, but I couldn't reach into it because there were a few things blocking me from getting to that. Yeah. Um, you know, the car example is that I was having my, I, I know I was having my foot on the gas, but I was also having my foot on the brakes. So I really had to identify what the foot on the brakes were. And to me that those were certain daily routines or rituals or certain habits I don't have that were hurting me in my health and wellness uh, weight loss journey. So that was specifically like, you know, certain foods uh, I was eating that weren't really nutri- nutritionally um, rich. And I knew that it was just hurting me eating those foods, consuming those foods and not exercising enough also, not drinking enough water and not sleeping enough. And all of those things together created a system of, of, uh, of just a malfunction or just of a, of a dysfunctional um, individual physically and just emotionally and just passionately speaking. I mean, so that was definitely a thought process to, to engage there. And then of course, there's the physical aspect because your body is addicted to things. So you have to break some addictions. So, I mean, I can imagine that was difficult as well. I mean, I've I was addicted uh, not to food, but you know, drugs for me. Uh, I could say yeah. I was addicted to drugs uh, to food as well. I mean, I had some serious problems with with food and health, and my blood and my triglycerides and everything else was jacked up. I could have died. Almost was uh, the doctors asked me if they didn't know how I was living. They thought I had pancake syrup for blood at one point in my life. It was insane. It's a whole other story. But anyway, it's it, it's so hard because I was so freaking addicted to sugar and sweets and all the good stuff that I would eat tons and I just would have no limit and then to have, when you actually put a limit on something like that whatever that is it's really hard so when you said first you know to have a uh, limits and eliminate uh, that's a pretty powerful way to think about it even for weight loss when you're trying to cut back and people think it eliminate all whites no breads no sugars no what okay well wait yeah, so, 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 so it's very easy to get caught up into like oh my gosh I can't have this I can't have that I can't have that so what could I have 
So we don't really ask what we could have. We're just like, oh my God, when we think that we can't have all these stuff we had till now, we're like, oh my gosh, that means I'm going to start. Yeah. So we're, we're really it's literally like, it's like the elephant in the room type of situation. Like, don't think about the elephant in the room. We're going to think about it. So we really, so the best thing, the best method I found, um, and obviously, um, you know, it's true through experience. Um, I'm always learning new things, but it's that don't think about what you can't have think about what you're going to replace what you shouldn't have with so if people were eating like artificial sugars or eating starchy foods i was like okay replace artificial sugars with natural sugars and then limit natural sugars and then eventually you'll eliminate natural sugars altogether so like if people is like if people are like used to eating a lot of grains which are very hard to metabolize i'll be like go to fruit and then i'll be like okay you're on fruit now limit fruit and then once you eventually limit fruit altogether then you could eat more veg healthy vegetables cook vegetables and proteins and then have some grains um, long term, and that would be your your a very uh, a very crucial fundamental um, lifestyle when it comes to to foods and nutritional health and de development. But the one of the one of the one of the big things a lot of people don't realize is, and obviously it took some research on my part to realize is, is the reason why we're addicted to sugar is not because we're addicted to sugar, but it's also it's because also because the sugar in our body is craving more sugar, and our body literally tells us not necessarily in a way that we we can translate it, but this is this is the message that goes to us that if we don't have the sugars that we need, we really feel that we're gonna die, and it's not that we God forbid you know physically will die, but it's those those toxins in the body that are made up of those sugars are literally gonna die, and they're literally and if they don't have more of it to feed onto, they're literally gonna die which is a good thing but we think that we're literally we're, we're literally gonna starve to death if we don't feed that sugar addiction yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Actually also scientifically wise scientifically speaking there's certain alcohols that the body releases upon the the beginning of the starvation and the decay of those toxins so a little person's like walking around like somewhat drunk because there's alcohol being released from the cells into the bloodstream when they're starving those those blood those those sugar toxins so it's a process but knowing this actually equips us with the mental and emotional fortitude to know that i'm starving the sh the, the, the carbohydrate toxins in my body the sugar toxins and it's a good thing and um, it's literally going to help me burn that fat, that weight loss, yeah. uh, those toxins off. And then eventually, you know, we reverse all that. And, you know, there's, there's a lot that comes away that comes off with those, the physical weight loss. There's a lot of, you know, toxic, negative emotions that come off with that. But that's another whole topic. And we might need a few more. Um, I know I'm sitting uh, thinking we're talking about everything. everything so far. It's been crazy. We're talking about Fortnite addictions and, and, pools and and ocean yeah, and, 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 imagina and imagination addiction and overdose yeah it's all oh good my gosh right <laughs> this is great this is great so uh and i was just thinking when you talk about sugars because you know with me i'm i've been battling cancer you know that so that's that's sugar is a is one of the main things that cancer loves to thrive on it eats sugar it, it feeds on right sugar. It, 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 yeah, it needs it needs it needs yeah the, uh, yeah it needs the acid that that sugar formulates and develops in the body yeah it's just so crazy how that happens in so many different ways of our lives right it's not necessarily i mean it's kind of like the sugar of life right i mean there's there, there's all kinds of things that that can cause that aren't good for us but at the same time isn't it awesome right it's like oh, i love the sugar it's so good crazy uh, i love i love the sugar is like is like is like it's literally like the best statement that we could hear ourselves say but it's also the worst because like i love chocolate does that mean i would like jump into the ocean to save a chocolate bar you know <laughs> right so i don't really love it i just like to consume it you know yeah, i like to like it a lot <laughs> yeah. i like it a lot and it's a little too much but like like I had somebody, somebody told me, somebody like, I don't like that vegetable. I'm like, okay, fine. Or I like this. I'm like, okay, fine. But your health is more important than what you like. Yeah. You literally even give up what you like for what's, what's important. It's like, it's like, really, it's like the, it's like the age old question of like, what's more important, what you want or what you need yeah. you, know, you need your life, but you want that chocolate bar and having that chocolate bar every single day is literally going to hurt you. Having it once in a while, obviously, obviously people are focused on so much more. Oh, I can't have this. Like, no, don't look at what you can't have every single day. Look at what you could have once in a while. Right. And, and it also goes back to, the, to, 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 to that idea of, you know, don't look at what you can have. Look at what you should replace what you can't have with. And people are like, oh, my gosh, I can't have this every single day. I'm like, or I can't have this once in a while. I'm like, you, we, we keep on focusing on what we can have because we feel that it's taking away from really our freedom, our liberty of, of the freedom of choice, which is the greatest gift of life. But um, but that's the wrong focus because we yeah, yeah. could have, and that will take us away from 
focusing on what we shouldn't have. But that, that, that basically goes back to the whole limit to eliminate and the Fortnite discussion we had a few minutes earlier, that um, limit what you shouldn't have and you'll eventually replace it, start replacing more of what you should have, and then eventually you'll be able to eliminate it altogether what you originally limited. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> so, <I think> <laughs> so let's talk about business here for, for a couple, we got a couple more minutes to go. So yeah. somebody, obviously you and I are on LinkedIn and there are so many, talk about an ocean, right? I mean, there's so many different types of people on LinkedIn and it's pretty fun uh, just because we get to hear so many different stories, different things that are, that are occurring out there all the time. So yeah. basically people are there because they're trying to, uh, to better themselves. Uh, there's a lot of people on there um, that are offering you know, words of affirmation and uh, inspiration, uh, different things to help build people up. Predominantly, that's what LinkedIn really is is all about. I love it for that reason. So for people that are, are actually curious, because I think there's a big curiosity uh, reason for LinkedIn as well. People are curious about things in life. And right. There's a lot, a lot of things they can get from that. So if somebody is tuning in, watching a couple of crazy bearded guys talking about everything under God's, God's son up here right now, um, what is something that you could, obviously the name of the show is called Hope Revealed. And I think we've been revealing hope in, in several different ways, a different way on this conversation today. Um, there's no doubt that hope is being revealed. So for somebody who's trying to, to really gather themselves together to be a, a person of influence or affluence or a person who's trying to do better for themselves and, uh, and really trying to find that place uh, in life, uh, what are some of those things you could share with them that would be hope, um, something that would help them to find ways to really grab onto something, to be able to do those things like kicking sugar to the curb, right? Not saying you can't do these things, but here's what you can do, right? So what are those things for people that are saying, I'm, I'm done, guys. I can't do what you guys do. What, okay, what can you do, right? So, right, so, so it's, a, it's a very powerful question, but the question itself is the answer. And what that means is as follows. You, we don't really hope about the past. We're always hoping now for now and now for the future. So there's so much hope in actually making a decision that you're making a decision. There's so much hope in realizing that freedom of choice is in your hands. There's so much hope in realizing that the thought itself that you want hope and the thought itself that you want change is the beginning of your progress. It's the beginning of your redemption. The awareness itself is the beginning of the liberty and freedom towards that greater degree of greatness and progress you want to make in any specific area of life that you're actually focusing on now. And that's one of the, my, the, one of the most important things that I love focusing on is the present and the future. One of the ways we should actually catch ourselves is that there's two types of fears in life. The reason why it's important to know the types of fears that we have in life is because we could reverse engineer the fears that we have to understand how to make sure to circumvent those and to make sure that really fear becomes our greatest asset of faith. And what that means is as follows. There's certain experiences that we've been through in life that we don't want that to happen again. So that's one type of fear. The fear of what we don't want to happen to happen again. That's one type of fear. That's the fear of repetition. We don't want things that happen to happen again. The fear of repetition. But then there's the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is a little greater because instead of hope, we're having fear towards the unknown. We don't know what's going to be. And we fear that what could possibly be that is yet to be is going to be stuff that we won't be able to embrace or it won't fit our comfort zone or it won't fit our growth criteria or it won't fit the context that will be most conducive and facilitate a growth, progressive, evolutionary um, trajectory or, or um, overall progress or an overall picture of a realistic growth reality for that matter. So the question is, how do we take those two fears and really reverse engineer them into hope? So the important thing is to realize that about the past repetition fear is that that was there to help you learn something that you didn't learn unless you actually went through that experience. So your past fear of repetition is actually um, is an awareness of education, of wisdom that you learned from experience. And then the fear of the unknown is actually we should reverse engineer that and take that apart into faith. And faith means that there's so much more of how much you could become in the unknown than in just falling back into the fear of thinking that what you don't know could hurt you. And how is that the case? Because there's so much more, there's so much more creativity in what's yet to be than in the parameters or the processes or the predictability of everything that was. There's so much more of the, of the 
of the impossible in the unknown that could that could yet that is yet to be possible then then everything that that was already so the question is why should you turn how how and why should you turn that fear of the unknown into faith and into hope that's because our thoughts our wishes our hopes literally influence the conditions that are yet to be to create the supernatural to become natural and what is unknown to eventually be everything that's going to help us so literally hope becomes the physical manifestation that began in the hope which is a an imagination which is the passion and imagination for the prayer of everything of everything you want to become the reality so it's important to realize that hope itself the decision that you're making to actually make a decision to hope is literally helping the unknown become a constructive a growth oriented soon to be known so hope is literally a prayer for the unknown to be unknown soon to be known that's going to be good bam <laughs> bam so yeah. what that means is reverse engineer your the faith the the fear of the unknown to be a faith mm -hmm. which is a prayer of hope for the unknown to be the most exciting suspenseful i don't know what's going to happen but when i go on a roller coaster I know that I'm going to feel something that I never felt, but guess what? There's so much more excitement in the unknown than the known because the known was already known. We have already exhausted the excitement for it because it's already known, but the faith and the hope and the decision you make for the decision that you're making now to hope for a greater optimistic future is what's bringing us towards the, 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 the fortitude of the unknown becoming known. And I mean, if you want a simple example or a simple lesson, of wisdom for this is in knowing that the 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 natural cycle of of the transitions of the seasons in nature and within agriculture specifically is that they know that when all the leaves fall down off of a tree it's literally creating the new season to come and for new fruit to be born so every void or every lack or every failure every fall right so every fall literally Every fall in fall is literally creating a rebirth or a renewal for new fruit to come. Right. So it's the same thing for us. So reverse engineer the faith of repetition of the fall to be the, a context for the unknown to be a new known of new fruit coming into your life. So we're literally utilizing the lessons around us of the known to invite the unknown to be to soon to be the the new known and obviously a new unknown to be waiting right behind that for a cycle of new fresh creative continuous creativity being the unknown to soon to be known and obviously a new unknown waiting behind that unknown that now became known waiting behind that to be a new level of creativity that's coming so we're always transitioning into higher levels of growth of perception of awareness emotional growth, strategic growth, uh, cognitive growth, any type of growth in consciousness of, uh, of the fear of the repetition becoming a faith of, of, of continuous hope of growth towards the unknown becoming known and an excitement and a suspense of literally living for the now that's anchored in a greater future of the unknown becoming the known and all possibilities living in the of all possibilities living literally being most excited because living literally being more most exciting because the impossible is right around the corner to be to soon to be possible so basically you don't know what i know but i don't know what you know but i know what i know and you know what you know and if you know what i know and i know what you know then we'll both know the unknown <laughs> you're crazy <laughs> That's awesome. So there's hope, y'all. There's hope, right? I said you said hope is faith. There is hope, and it's inside of you. And um, you you just need a deep breather, and yeah, breathe deeper, and realize the hope is within you. It's not something. It's not an over the counter pill. Uh, the decision of itself to, to to find hope and to be hope is 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 the most. I mean, we could cry out of the desperation, but we could also cry out of courage and hope. And yeah. There's a very big difference. We need to ask ourselves: Are we feeling empty because we know that there's something that is waiting? to fill that void or are we just crying because we're looking into the past are we crying because we're looking into the future and it's a tears of hope or are we crying god forbid out of desperation so it's asking just going back to the mm -hmm. beginning of the conversation are we curious because because of the past are we curious about why the past happened or are we curious about how where we are today is literally going to bring us into a greater space and where what we could become more of oh yeah there's no doubt i mean you can imagine that people man 
when I was in high school, there was not even such thing as, as cell phones. And here we are right now, uh, we're states apart from one another and we're talking on TVs to each other that we hold in hands and talk. You know, I mean, these things were things that people dreamed of back in those days, like one day and, and today we crack them in our pockets and like, ah, oh, crap, well, I got to get another new phone, right? But back in those days, they're thinking, oh, right? So it's just amazing how we can go from uh, where the Bible says you go from glory to glory. So it's just from one thing to the next, how amazing we can go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. You know? Light to light and uh, strength to strength, blessing to blessing, growth to greatness and uh, greatness to extraordinary and extraordinary to the impossible. That's right. Dream the impossible dream. Come on, Sam, sing it with me. Dream on! <laughs> but stay in reality. Yeah. We, can, we can do that whole talk all night long thing for sure. It would be so much yeah, fun. Man. Yeah, yeah. Lord, take me high and higher, but come back down. Yeah, you got to come back to that ground because you got to go home to, to mama and four boys, and uh, it's time to go to bed here a little bit, right? So get high, but bring that high into the lows of life, dude. See, like you should write for like some new brand of Hallmark, like should be High Mark. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my lord thanks so much i'm getting i'm now. getting high on my lows i'm getting high on my lows Look, he's, this is how you wind down he's winding down right now i'm watching you do it right now it's like you got but you've got to walk I'm home yeah i'm winding down i'm winding down to get higher that's right oh my gosh here we go don't tell my wife that because she has hard enough time with me as it is so <laughs> Will you stop talking to him, Sam? <laughs> oh my lord, man! I appreciate you're overdosing on imagination. You're overdosing on imagination. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. It never stops, right? So good. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll keep in touch. See you in the field, rock and roll. Yeah, man. Thanks for everything. Thank you. I hope and pray today has been a blessing to you. And before we go, I want to share a great scripture from Philippians four six through nine. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need to thank Him for all He's done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and dear sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what's true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then. The God of peace will be with you. And that he surely will, my friends. I hope and pray you have a better view of hope this week. That being said, don't give in, don't give up, and know that in every life there is a hope revealed.